What is it you see when you wake up in the morning? Um, how do you share what you see with somebody else? Um, do you have a method of beeping it, <laughs> beeping it to other people? My name is Beverly George. I live at Pearl Beach, which is north of Sydney in New South Wales, Australia. Um, my home is between a freshwater lagoon and the ocean. Um, and the village that I live in has an arboretum, a wildlife corridor, and um, a plethora of, of birds and, and creatures like wallabies and snakes and koalas and, and a lot of water birds too, including pelicans. So um, there's plenty of inspiration there in my daily life. Even if I don't write a haiku down, I might be thinking one or I might be remembering somebody else's. I came to haiku in 1997, although I'd read one when I was 14, which stayed in my mind all my life. It was uh, in a novel uh, by Alicia E. Kurt Rothels called Time of the Dragons. And in the whole novel, there was only two haiku but I never forgot them. And in 1997, when a lady called Patricia Kelsall from Victoria began a magazine called Yellow Moon and started explaining haiku, I could immediately go to my bookshelf <laughs> and retrieve these poems. Yellow Moon was a magazine which uh, particularly published the um, Asian forms like haiku and tanka and haibun, um, but also some Western poetry. And in the year 2000, Patricia Kelsall, who had not enjoyed good health, became even less well. And she asked me, would I take over editing and producing the magazine Yellow Moon? And as I was still very embryonic <laughs> with learning haiku, um, I very wisely turned to Janice Bostock, um, who became a very good friend and I appointed her as the senior advisor for the uh, haiku and related forms that we published in Yellow Moon. But I belong to a small group of haiku poets called um, Red Dragonflies. They're led by Vanessa Proctor who will be attending this conference. and. Um, I've recently been literary advisor twice to Mitsui Travel. In November 2010, we went to Japan in the footsteps of Basho, and we traveled from Tokyo to Nikko, Sendai, and up to Matsushima, Yamagata, the Basho Museum. And then we went to Matsuyama, which you probably know um, is where Shiki was born, and um, there, they have post boxes in the streetcars, on the corners, in the shops, uh, on the castle top, uh, where you post haiku. So you write a haiku, you post it. At some stage, the city fathers look at it, and uh, sometimes you hear and sometimes you don't. So, um, but it's just a wonderful celebration of poetry. What sustains me in haiku and keeps my interest is the fact that like painting or photography, it makes you look harder at things. It makes you notice more. Um, and so I think it actually adds to the way we move through our lives because we're forever looking for detail or um, for things that, to, that delight us. Another thing that sustains me in haiku is that it's such a fellowship. It has taken me to countries. It has introduced me to other people with similar out outlooks on life or, or sometimes from very different backgrounds. But there is something we've got in common. We're, we're looking at what's around us and we're looking at it with appreciation and more clarity than what we would have if we weren't trying to pin it down in these few little tantalizing words that we're, we have at our disposal. I did have a problem once with a, a, an Australian journalist who wanted me to say that haiku was good for your health. And I said, I worked for CSIRO, I will not make a health claim 
for haiku. I just don't think that's, that's right. But if she had said well-being, I would have agreed with it because I think it does help um, people um, to express themselves and to feel good about what's around them. It's an observation of nature that celebrates the world we live in in, de in some fine detail um, that, that improves the way we feel about being human.